My favourite habit would probably be integrity because it is one of the most hard ones to do, but if you do it right, you've got people will trust you and you will probably be more successful than not doing integrity. I like the dwarf that stands on the giant's shoulders and even though the giant is bigger, when a dwarf stands on a giant's shoulders, it could actually see further. And I found that really handy because it, it helped me stand on the shoulders of Warren Buffett. I can learn more than just standing by myself. Probably energy because it really means that you do things with a passion and you commit to them. You don't be slack, you really need to try your best and go the extra mile. The only one I've read is Lucas's and it's really good because it, it kind of really opens your eyes about money in a child's perspective. The idea of a book for this age group I think is a good idea, especially as he's trying to get that medium of ha having the vibrant, bright pictures to go with it and some good life learning sort of going through it as well. If you don't pay attention to your bank account and everything, then it's probably just going to go, you're going to lose control of it. It's like driving a car, you got to stay focused so, and if you don't stay focused you crash. If you don't stay focused with your bank it crashes. I was first thinking of doing jobs around the house and getting a paper run. Yeah, and then as soon as Lucas came in, I started fundraising. I like the idea of him using Warren Buffett as a figurehead because obviously he has made a lot of money. Because he's a philanthropist and yes, he's made a lot of money, but he sees from what I understand, kind of that there is a debt from society. He's made the money from society. He intends to give it back. So he's a contributor back to the world, not just a taker. So I think it's important that he uses a role model like that, where it isn't all about money for money's sake and being greedy and selfish with what you do with it in the end. It will make you want to try harder, and it gives you kind of a plan of what you want to do and you take each habit one step at a time. Myself growing up in the 60s and 70s we launched into first jobs without any understanding of money whatsoever and sort of tripped over, made mistakes but it is a financial world, it's a busy world. The more they know about it as soon as possible I think is fantastic for them. I've been thinking about how to make money and I've been doing that and I've actually been making my money and setting myself some goals. If you keep being committed and you do what you want to do, you can be successful. Financial literacy does not get taught in schools. There's a lot of people talking about it, but nothing ever comes of what they talk about. I think, personally, that it's really important. I think the reason it's not being met is that too, too often it's sold as it's something about money. It's something about how you save and what you do with money, whereas there's a hell of a lot more to financial literacy in terms of the kinds of habits, the kind of behaviours, the kind of way you should think about the resources that are around us and how we go about um, understanding the basic ideas of those. The way that I'd see the financial literacy being taught is not necessarily as a separate subject, but as a series of stories and a series of activities and projects that teachers could do. The resources are not there, all right, which is where your book could fill that, that gap. Your book helps scaffold kids and scaffold step-by-step -step process for an understanding that they can have control of their lives by just having a knowledge of how to go about accumulating wealth. If we could give them the resources, if we could give them the big ideas, and particularly if we could link those big ideas to what they're currently doing now, then I don't think it would be difficult at all.
To me, it's not just about money. It's also about a way of life. And to me, there are things that go even deeper than money. Of course, ultimately, financial literacy is about the finance side of things. But that is only one part of it. And whilst most kids have a reasonably quick understanding of what the money side of it is, it's all the things that surround it that we're not teaching these kids. And like the kind of work Lucas is doing where he's looking at the habits, those habits are more than financial literacy. But then applying it to that particular concept is not a difficult ask for most kids. Lucas came in and talked to a class of 32 children who were a stream maths class, so they were average to above average intelligence kids. The particular children that you interviewed, it lit their fire and they, they just spoke from the heart and they've continued on with it. They still talk about it and it meant something to them and I think they are the sort of kids that will actually go on and do something with it later. I think Lucas is on a winner. I think he's got the essence of all that makes a difference in terms of how we turn kids on to learning. Uh, he's got a great idea. He's got probably the, some of the most stunning artwork that I've ever seen. And he's got a story. He also has got that skill to tell a story. And there's nothing better than a storyteller. The fact that Lucas has spent the time coming in and working with this particular age group I think is going to make a huge difference. He's open to listening to them. He's taken on board what, they've, what they have to say. He's seen what sparked their passion. I mean, what better way for an author to try and hit their target market is to include their target market in, in the process itself. He's got a story about a man who went from nothing to enormously successful based on a series of principles. One of the things schools should do is teach kids that effort matters. And effort does matter, and this is a classic case of that. So I think the, the story he's got to tell and the multiple ways he wants to tell it is a success, and that's what I like about what he's doing. He didn't come and say, I've got a story about financial literacy. He didn't come and say, I've got a story about a billionaire. He came and said, I've got a story about how a person became that on the basis of these habits and these principles. It's a winner. 13 habits that made me billions. Inspired by Warren Buffett. Good habits are like a genie that creates a magical force in your life. Powerful indeed is the, the empire of habit. If he could get the support of a Warren Buffett to help in the inspiration of the story, uh, this would be a, a major coup in terms of what we could do in our schools and how we can use this kind of resource and this kind of book to engage kids, to start to think about what it means when you go into the business world, when you go into the financial world. <laughs>